So the first talk is by Professor Chandan Das Gupta from IASC and ICTS Bangalore. The title of his presentation is Dipole Alignment of Water Molecules Flowing Through a Carbon Nanotube. Okay, so uh, first of all, let me start uh, with um, uh, thanking the organizers of this very nice meeting for the invitation. Uh, Chandan, your video is off. Video is off. Yes. It's okay yes, now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm particularly happy to be uh, participating in this meeting because here we are celebrating the science of two very dear friends, Mustan Sir and Deepak. Uh, I should mention that uh, I'm, I'm traveling, so I, I may not be able to actually participate in the last session today, where they will be uh, on it. Uh, so let me just take uh, this uh, a few minutes to basically wish both Deepak and Murtansi uh, all the very best. Uh, many more years of uh, happy, healthy, and productive years to come. So today I'll be talking about some work that I uh, have been doing with the people that are uh, uh, listed here. Uh, Hemant was our uh, student many years ago, and we started this work also many years ago, but Hemant is now uh, a faculty at uh, IIT Bhubaneswar. Then there are a couple of students, uh, Sahib Bera, and uh, these are my colleagues, Kobal and uh, Ajay, are my colleagues at IAS. <clears throat> so, a very quick introduction to. Why is it not moving? Seems that. To in uh, nanotubes, uh, a few are sort of with carbon nanotubes, so I'll not really go into the details there. Uh, we are looking at single walled uh, narrow uh, carbon nanotubes, and uh, people have both uh, and uh, uh, in, in simulations and all that. Is that if, uh, if we immerse one of these nanotubes in water, then water enters spontaneously into these nanotubes. So it's, it's very easy to actually uh, prepare a system where you have water which is confined in a, a narrow nano uh, carbon nanotube. Uh, and uh, there are various interesting properties that people have found for this uh, strongly confined water. Uh, there is a uh, review that I have mentioned here, which uh, dis discusses some of these properties. Uh, today, we'll be talking about actually a specific case where we are looking at uh, uh, a nanotube like this in water which is flowing. So what do we look at this problem? We look at this problem uh, the, of experiments. And uh, this is an experiment that was done many years ago, actually, but when um, uh, Shankar was actually a, a student uh, in the Sud lab. And uh, what they found is very interesting, since it's a very simple experiment, where you have a bundle of uh, carbon nanotubes, and then uh, you arrange things in such a way that water is flowing across them. So this is the simple experiment where there is a arrangement for a flow of water, and this is the nanotube bundle and water is flowing across that. And uh, what they found is very interesting result that uh, when that happens, when the nanotube is, or a bundle of nanotubes is placed in uh, flowing water, uh, then uh, voltage develops across them. So you measure the voltage between this point and that point, which is plotted in the y-axis. On the x-axis, we plot the velocity of this water, uh, which is flowing. And uh, they found that uh, whenever the velocity is non-zero, then a voltage develops. This is a very interesting experiment. And uh, this is basically what we are trying to understand. We have been trying to understand this for many years. Many other people have also done. Uh, so my work that I'll be talking about today is, uh, in some sense, uh, another attempt to understand what's going on in this And uh, among the various uh, studies of this system, there is one that I want to mention. Uh, where uh, what people found is that uh, when water is confined inside a uh, nanotube, and uh, the nanotubes are such that their dipole moments are aligned, then uh, voltage develops across this uh, nanotube. So voltage generation based on water field single walled carbon nanotubes, this is again uh, was done by basically uh, numerically, and people found that uh, the alignment of the dipoles of the water molecules confined inside a nanotube actually produces a voltage across the nanotube. So what we try to understand is that 
so this is without any flow. This is just a static situation. So what we wanted to understand was if you now have flow, then whether that flow can align the dipole moments of the nanotubes, uh, uh, dipole moments of the water molecules, which are confined in the nanotube. So then, I mean, you know, combining these two, that uh, it says that when there is alignment, there is voltage uh, generated. And if flow itself uh, produces alignment, then that could be a possible mechanism for the generation of the voltage. So that is basically the problem that we want to study using uh, <laughs> The question is, can flow induce the development of water dynamics? And uh, in these simulations, we basically place a nanotube in a bath of water. And uh, then uh, we apply forces uh, to the left, to the water molecules, which are to the left and which are to the right. And uh, that way, basically, one generates a flow which is going from left uh, to right. And uh, then we want to see what happens to the dipole moments of the water molecules which are confined in the nanotube, which are passing through the nanotube. Now we are in a dynamic situation. There is a flow. Water molecules are not uh, stationary, but they are moving. And the molecules will move also through this uh, narrow nanotube. And what we have to find is uh, the moments get aligned when they are inside the nanotube. So, and this is a particular. Uh, 1010 nanotube, uh, which has a diameter of 1.4 nanometer. And if I look at the cross section of uh, this nanotube, then we'll see that there is a ring of water, and uh, which is sort of near the surface of the nanotube. And in the center, there is a, a line of water molecules. So this is the arrangement uh, of the water molecules when they're inside the nanotube. And we have this flow, and uh, the velocity of the flow velocity can be controlled by how much force is being applied to this uh, uh, water molecule to the left and to the right. And uh, what we found is this uh, interesting result. So this is the, the structure that we are talking about. We have a, a, box, which has a cylinder of water, and then we put, put this nanotube inside. And then uh, this uh, uh, water molecules to the left and water molecules to the right, there are uh, some forces applied in the AMP simulation, which causes the water molecules to flow from uh, the enter to the left end and then go out through the right. What we found was that there is actually uh, alignment of the water molecules in the nanotube uh, when the water is flowing. So there are a couple of results that I want to show here. Uh, one is looking at the uh, this probability distribution of the angle that a particular water molecule, the dipole moment of a particular water molecule makes with the axis of the nanotube. And uh, then there are uh, various uh, uh, curves here, which correspond to different flow velocities. Uh, the blue one, uh, you look, uh, there's no flow there. It's a stationary situation. And there you see that uh, this distribution has two peaks. One is around 40 degrees, and the other is around, around um, 130 degrees or something like that. So there is a bistable situation that the water molecules inside the nanotube basically prefer to be uh, two uh, different orientations. One corresponds to this peak, the other corresponds to that peak. And these two, I mean, when, I, when, I, when, I, uh, when there is no flow, the heights of these two peaks are the same. So that basically means that there is no net dipole moment. But uh, when uh, uh, flow is induced, then you see that the peak that is to the left, that increases, and the peak that is to the right decreases. So there is a higher probability of the water molecules to point uh, in this particular orientation, where this theta angle is like 140 degrees or something like that. And there is a less probability of uh, opposite dipole moment. So it basically says that uh, net dipole moment will be generated when there is flow. And, uh, and the same thing is shown, uh, same physics is shown here, where we are plotting the probability distribution of uh, the net dipole moment in the flow direction. And as you can see here, uh, when this blue one, when there is no flow, then you have this kind of again by stability. But uh, these two heights are the same, so there is no net uh, moment. But as soon as you uh, increase the flow velocity, then uh, this uh, symmetry is broken, and you basically have uh, a peak here and uh, basically no peak at the other end. So there will be a net dipole moment, which is pointing in the flow direction. So this is basically the observation that you get from uh, the molecular dynamic simulations that uh, when water through the nanotube is actually flowing, then uh, the dipole moments of the water molecules that are inside the nanotube are preferentially oriented the moment is produced uh, in the direction of the flow. 
Uh, this is basically the uh, average dipole moment as a function of flow velocity. Now, as you can see here, there is no dipole moment when the flow velocity is zero, and then as you increase the flow velocity, then a net, net dipole moment is generated. One can do the simulation at different temperatures, and as you as you can see here, uh, when the temperature is increased, the net dipole moment is decreased. Uh, there are these uh, solid lines which you don't have to pay much attention to at this point. Uh, we'll later on uh, try to understand what is going on in this system, why this net dipole moment is being produced. But uh, the important thing is that uh, uh, dipole moment increases with flow and then eventually saturates. So the question is what is the going on? So <laughs> molecular dynamic simulation, you can actually look at individual water molecules and then you know, uh, measure whatever quantity you want to measure. So we found that the reason for this uh, net dipole moment production is the following. So now we look at uh, water molecules which are entering uh, into the nanotube. So this is a uh, situation here, but we have to see the blue, we have the nanotube and then the water molecule is going inside. And uh, the water molecule can go inside with this dipole moment pointing inwards or outwards. So these are the two uh, situations that I have shown here. One is uh, the moment is pointing inwards, other is it's outwards. And uh, surprisingly, what we found was that the water molecule has a propensity to go in with its dipole moment pointing inwards. So <clears throat> there is a, a preference that when the water molecule is going the nanotube, then uh, more often than not, its dipole moment will be pointing uh, inwards. Uh, and that we can understand it. I mean, we don't need to go into too many details. What we find is that. Yeah, there are sorry, two there more is, minutes. Uh, ah, two more minutes. Sir. Yeah. But there is some uh, noise in the background, so I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, that's okay. It's not <clears throat> And uh, we can read it into energetics. I mean, so basically, you look at the uh, energy of the water molecules, it's not a point of picking force, which has the oxygen and the hydrogen. And uh, its energy when its uh, dipole moment is pointing inwards, and in other case, it's pointing outwards. And uh, through this, we can, we can rationalize the fact that when it goes in, its dipole moment preferentially points inwards. Uh, now, when there is no flow, then of course, the two ends of the uh, nanotube are the, are the same. Uh, so, on the left-hand side, the water molecules will go in with uh, the dipole moment pointing to the right, and in the left uh, end, again, dipole uh, the water molecules will come in. I mean, there is no, 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 no preference between the left and the right. So, on the right end, the water molecules will come in with the, with the dipole moments pointing to the left. And uh, these two will basically cancel each other, and there will be no net dipole moment. But when there's flow, of course, I mean, you know, the number of water molecules which are going through uh, the, the, uh, the nanotube, uh, much larger of them will be entering from the left and a smaller number will be entering from the right because there is flow. And uh, as a result, the symmetry is broken and uh, that is why basically one, one, one gets a uh, uh, type of moment. So that is uh, shown here. If I look at the flux, number of water molecules going through, and uh, we are looking at the two ends, these two, the top two, uh, correspond to the water molecule, uh, and then you can see here the, I have uh, two different curves. One corresponds to uh, water molecules with the dipole moments pointing to the right, and the other corresponds to dipole moment pointing to the left. And uh, now they become different. And when there is no flow, uh, it's basically they are basically the same. But then, as uh, you increase the flow velocity, then uh, the difference between these two uh, become large. So there's a preferential pointing of the dipole moment uh, inwards. And then the other two are actually at the other end. The, and there, I mean, when there is flow, the number of water molecules going in through the other end will be much less. And so overall, there will be a net dipole moment of the water molecules, which are inside uh, the nanotube. Okay, so this is basically what I'm telling you, the sizing model representing whether the dipole moment is from the right or to the left. And uh, then we have two fields, uh, HL and HR, which is uh, basically uh, fields uh, which are applied to the two end spins. And they represent this uh, effect of uh, the preferential orientation when uh, it is uh, uh, to the So just to, just to uh, they're having, we are having this problem with the internet, let me make it quick. So we have this, uh, we have this uh, magnetic field acting to on the, on the to the left and to the right, and they uh, one of them positive is negative, 
representing the effect of this effect that the words uh, and when they are the same then uh, there is no net magnetization in the uh, case of uh, the uh, water tube that basically there is no net type of moment and HL is going to be the magnitude of H are going to be the same when there is no flow. So now we look at the, the so magnitude of the two fields they apply to the two end and the uh, difference is different. The function of the difference between the fields where you see that there is a uh, development relation. And uh, one can basically then uh, uh, compare what we see in this, in this, in this uh, simple model calculation with uh, what we see in the simulations and uh, seeing the uh, difference appropriately with velocity, we get basically the same kind of uh, dependence of uh, the net magnetization or the net polarization. So this is, uh, there are the two plots here, one corresponds to this stabilizing model, which one can just simulate uh, analytically, and uh, what we see in the flow simulator. But, uh, the development of the polarization with the flow velocity can be understood from the simple Isaac model, but you have uh, basically uh, fields uh, at the ends of the, of the chain. And uh, by making this field different, which is basically mimicking the breaking of the left right uh, symmetry, when there is flow, one can uh, understand the results. So the final slide is. This is this is. So what is the situation now? Uh, we can see the screen. You can see, see the screen and you can hear me also, is it? Yeah, yeah, both. Yeah. So, partial alignment of the moments when they are inside the nanotube. Uh, the entry effect, the fact that the diameter of the molecules preferentially and inwards when they go into the nanotube, that plays an important role. And uh, we can progress the uh, uh, understanding of what is going on. And this could be an explanation of the experimental results of Hunger uh, and uh, Ajay. But I mean, you know, for what is to be done to make sure that this is the correct explanation. So that's where I end. Uh, again, uh, all the rest to Ibak uh, and Mustafsi. Sorry for the uh, we had a different presentation. I am not at home, so and, 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 and this is very unfortunate. But uh, anyway, thanks for your uh, attention. Yeah, thank you, Professor Dasgupta, for the interesting talk. Uh, though we had a few technical glitches, but let's take one or two questions. So in the chat box, Professor Sriram Ramaswamy asked, are the imposed forces at the entry and exit equivalent to a pressure gradient? Uh, you could think of that. I mean, uh, it basically represents the asymmetry of the water molecules that are coming from the left end and the uh, water molecules which are coming in from the right end. And so there is a pressure gradient and these two will be different and that will correspond to a difference between the magnitudes of the two fields that I put at the ends of the chain. Okay, but you don't know if the flow, I mean, I guess there's no way of looking at a flow profile inside the tube because it's too narrow. Uh, flow profile one can, one can look at, and uh, one can also look at the uh, local uh, uh, orientation, the local type of moment, and how that is changing across uh, the length of the tube. And it looks like more or less linear. Nice. Okay, thanks. The next question is from Deepak Dhar. Does the voltage developed across a nanotube depend on its length? Uh, experimentally, uh, I'm sure it will depend on the length. Uh, in the simulations also, we looked at uh, how the alignment inside, how the net type of movement uh, we, we, we cannot look at the voltage because the connection uh, uh, of the voltage to the dipole moment is something that is complicated. But we can look at the net dipole moment as a function of length. And uh, in the simulations, they don't depend very strongly on the length, although the uh, different lengths that we can sort of simulate 
uh, are somewhat limited because of uh, you know resources and so on. But over the uh, by by a factor of maybe five or so, we have looked at how things depend on the length. And uh, uh, net dipole moment doesn't seem to depend very strongly on the length. But how that relates to the voltage is something that we cannot do from this simulation. Thank you. Uh, Prabod Shukla? Yeah, I mean, does uh, the temperature of water play any significant role? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, in the situation, you can results for different temperatures. I can, I can, yeah. So, more is in temperature, but it does seem to be that as you go to higher temperatures, then the type of moment will uh, decrease. And the same thing also once once is in the moment uh, okay uh, you can yeah yeah i think the sound breaks but okay you're saying it does have some effect but uh, maybe not such a something that causes a phase transition or something uh, no, I mean, you know, uh, there will be some, uh, some asymmetry. So, I mean, there will be always uh, uh, some uh, magnetic moment when the two fields at the two ends don't uh, cancel out. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks. Thanks very much. Professor Mustang Sir Barma? Yeah, uh, Chandan, yeah, uh, given that uh, the dipole moment is a vector, uh, wouldn't a spin model like a classical Heisenberg model in one day be a better model than an Heisenberg model? Uh, actually, I mean, if I look at the water molecules, uh, I don't know if you can see here. Uh, you can see that I mean, uh, these two peaks, there are two peaks. I mean, if I just look at the uh, uh, of the radiation of the uh, type moment of the, uh, water molecules, oh, okay. there are two peaks. All right, all right. Uh, one, one corresponds to uh, double moment point to the right, the, the, because of the interaction of the water molecules with the so on. So it's not uh, uh, flat. So, I mean, in the sense okay. that there are two different values which are picked out, and uh, that way, Ising model is a, is a better representation. Yeah, good. Thanks.